Hello, my name is Gray. And my name is Crystal. And this is Vasti Asian Beauties, the Supernatural Commentary Podcast, where I, someone who has seen this show several times, and I, someone who only knows the show through social media, discuss every single episode of Supernatural from start to finish. Also, we are both Asian. Both Asian. So for today's episode, we will be discussing Season 2, Episode 12, Night Shifter. Uh-huh. Yeah, I almost forgot. But this one is written by Ben Edlund and directed by Mr. Phil Segrisha himself. Yeah. So, uh, familiar names. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, mean, I know we're supposed to like Ben Edlund, but I mean, I haven't enjoyed his work in season two so far. I think I enjoyed this one because of the nostalgia. Like, it ends on a really good note, in a note that I really remember. So, Mm -hmm. like, watching it again, it's like, oh my god, it's supernatural, oh my god. (laughs) So, like, I I did enjoy that. But uh, I think I've told you this in a recording before, but I cut it out of the podcast, so I'm just going to say it again. Like, I said back then that Ben Edlund... It's kind of weird about women. <laughs> yeah. 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 Like, even in his other episodes, even his future episodes, there are moments where I'm like, oh, I'm, uh, about women. Uh-huh. Yeah. 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 Apparently, I'm allergic to the word misogynistic. <laughs> but... <laughs> I, like, does he have a thing for women dying in lacy night dresses? Like, is that something that he's into? I'm. The thing is, I'm not sure if that's, like, you know, like, his writing or the choice of the costume department. Right, right. They have yeah. their hookers and nuns costume yeah. department sections. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Go, Ben. <laughs> ben, you are beloved by the Tumblrinos, but you have not been showing us your good side uh, recently. Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay. So, Crystal, before going in, mm-hmm. what what do you do? You know anything about this episode? I did not know anything about this episode, but I could guess from the title that it was a shapeshifter episode. Uh, yeah, that's true. Did you, while watching, did you go? Oh, I recognize this. I mean, no, I'm for sure because the... Hendrickson is there. Yeah. The okay. The first moment I recognized was when Sam and Dean show their badges to yeah. Mon or whatever his name is, yeah. Yeah. And they slap him against the glass because I feel like that's in a lot of AMVs. Yeah. And then, I mean, I recognized Henriksen, but I don't think I've seen any of the scenes that he's in in this episode, okay, besides yeah. screenshots of the times when he asks if John was a white supremacist. Yeah, so true of him. <laughs> So uh, true of him. You, you didn't know about the music cue at the end. I did not. That's an iconic, super natural scene. Like, like when I was younger, like when I uh-huh. first got into the fandom, like that was the scene that I would rewatch over and over again on YouTube. <laughs> For real. I liked it so much. So like seeing it again, I kind of forgot that it was going to happen in this episode, but seeing it mm. again was like super fun. I had so much fun. This was actually like, I remember one time I, uh-huh. I told my friend that I was listening to uh, Renegade by Sticks. And she was like, okay, why don't we watch it together, like, on Messenger, the watch together feature. And, uh-huh. like, if you if you look up Renegade by Sticks on Facebook, all yeah. that shows up are Supernatural fan videos. So to listen to this song, we, like, just watch a Supernatural fan <laughs> video, which is truly the Supernatural fan experience. Yeah. Yeah. It's weird listening to songs I know from AMVs and not hearing the dialogue bits. No, exactly. Like, what do you mean that wasn't in the song? (laughs) Yeah. So, 
Okay, let's start the actual episode. We have the road so far, which is uh, a combination of like Dean fucking up with the law, you know, like mm. uh, like from Skin and the Usual Suspects, and then it's cut abruptly by uh, like a news forecast thing. So like you know they're playing around with the yeah. They're having format fun of with the, the show. Format. They're having fun. Yeah, which is fun to watch. Anyway, like, this is just your typical, like, there's a hostage situation, and we're uh, watching how it's going down. And uh, just as the report is about to end, something happens, which is a hostage is let out of the building. And as the camera zooms in on the door, we see that the hostage taker... It's Dean Winchester. Ooh. Yep. That's yep. him. Yeah. I think my only note during this scene, like my only bullet point, was where's Sam? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, literally. This entire episode is also very Dean centric, isn't it? They literally locked Sam up in a bank vault so he couldn't be <laughs> part of the episode. <laughs> No, you're right. You're absolutely right. <laughs> so, uh, we go to one day ago. We're in Milwaukee. And Sam and Dean are in a jewelry store interviewing some people about a potential case. And the scene cuts between Sam being an actual regular person asking questions <laughs> And Dean chatting up this woman who, I mean, to be fair, is chatting him up right back. Yeah. So, like I said, no misogyny points for flirting. He's just flirting. Yeah. yeah. He's just flirting. Yeah. So this woman is, like, all leaning in, being like, so what's it like being an FBI guy? And Dean's trying to pull off the dark and brooding thing. He's like, it's so it dangerous. It does not fit him We have to at keep all. secrets, but mostly, it's lonely. Like, Jesus. And he's yeah, this so annoying. Says, <laughs> yeah, he's so annoying. He's so fucking annoying. He's so annoying. Like I can't we've stand talked it. before about whether this would work on us or whatever the fuck. <laughs> I think if a guy told me that he was like, "Oh, the secrets that I have to keep," like I'm so lonely, I'll be like, "Okay, <laughs> whatever. I don't need that in my life." Yeah, yeah. And she replies to that, "I so know what you mean." Which I think is Bedlin just being a tad misogynistic and trying to make her out as, like, vapid or something. But I choose to believe that she's also a secret agent. Every woman in this episode, episode is... is made out to be vapid. Like, that's yeah. just what is going on. And yeah, it frustrates me, honestly, Mr. Ben Edlin. It's this is really annoying. Yeah. Yeah, he's like, writing them like they're a completely different species. No, exactly, and it sucks. Like, yeah, like I don't know. Yeah, sometimes I do wonder, like, because I've consumed Supernatural so much and I've consumed it at like a, such a significant portion of my life. Sometimes I wonder, uh -huh. like, did Supernatural affect how I view like certain things? Right. Right. Like, sometimes I'm like, do I think that women are vapid <laughs> because of Supernatural? And like, obviously, I don't think women are vapid. But, like, you know, uh -huh. it, there is that kind of, like, fear, I guess. That like, oh, no, yeah. what if I absorbed the things that Supernatural is peddling, like, unconsciously, right. and I'm unconsciously exhibiting them? Yeah. yeah. No, I get that. I mean, yeah. I've definitely felt myself become desensitized to misogyny within Supernatural during the course of this podcast, but I don't know if that translates to me being desensitized to, like, real-world misogyny, so I guess we'll see. I guess we'll see. Is Supernatural making us worse people? We'll find out in six years. <laughs> So, uh, while this is happening, Sam is talking to the jewelry store manager, and uh, we find out that the situation is that an employee here who is very trusted 
like, one day just showed up, robbed the whole place, and then got caught by a security guard, and she took his gun and killed him while he was on the phone with the manager. And then uh, we find out from Franny, the woman that Dean's flirting with, that after the theft, this woman went back home and killed herself. Uh, and apparently that really gets them in the mood, because <laughs> <laughs> Dean's like, thanks, I think that's all I need, and she's like, really? Because I've got more. If you wanted to interview me sometime in private. Yeah. And Dean's like, yeah, sure. I mean, something <laughs> we have learned about the current true crime craze is that women be listening to true crime and enjoying it. So maybe yeah. this woman is a true crime enthusiast. Yeah, probably so. Um... And Sam finds out that the police took all the security camera footage. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, Sam and Dean head out with Dean having Franny's number in toll. Yeah, and he never calls her. And I know it's yeah. like a bad situation they've gotten themselves in and like 24 hours later. But like, yeah, no, they're fucked. Give her a call, Dean. <laughs> I think she'll be fine if she found out that you are a wanted criminal of, I like, think she might be uh, into States. it. Yeah. N like, seeing how she has reacted here, like, she might be into it. <laughs> so Sam and Dean hop out of the car in front of this house. And, you know, they're talking about how, like, Dean's like, fuck the cops. And Sam is like, they're just doing their job. And Dean says, they're just doing our job but worse so you yeah. know so sam's a bootlicker and dean <laughs> licks his own boot which is not that much better yeah it's like later on they have this conversation about how sam is so good at playing cop uh-huh you know? like and yeah. it's like oh well, okay <laughs> sure <laughs> yeah i think this episode is best enjoyed like, like talking about it in a podcast is to the detriment of the episode. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, this is the type of episode that you watch and you're just like mindless. And you're like, I'm not even going to think about any of the implications or anything that's going on. Like, I'm just going to watch it. And when somebody shoots someone, I'm like, hell yeah, guns or whatever the fuck. How people watch <laughs> Supernatural. Like, this is that kind of episode. Yeah, <laughs> but you alas, are, we are the talking. intended audience. <laughs> <laughs> Alas, we are talking about it in a podcast, so... Yeah. Anyway, Sam and Dean walk towards the house, and Sam is doing exposition, which is all he's here for in this entire episode. <laughs> which is that, like, this Milwaukee um, National Trust bank was robbed, like, a month ago. And it's the same MO as the jewelry store. So... Uh, the, the, they're gonna talk to the security guard that was on duty at the time. So they knock at the door and like uh, I think they establish here that like the guy is coat pretty weird, you know? Like yeah. the lights is like oh this guy is like paranoid in some way. I think that's what it's trying to say. And right. like yeah, the guy walks, like, there's bright light suddenly, and the guy walks in, and he asks for ID. Which, like, it's fascinating how they yeah. use the, like, ask for ID thing. Like, it can either be, uh -huh. like, she's a cool girl, and she, like, yeah. knows her way around, or, like, he's uh -huh. a fucking paranoid-ass man, you know? Yeah. It's, like, okay, sure. Right, uh, it's weird. But, I mean, I feel like, because they establish him as unattractive, I think, is sort of what they're doing here. They've, yeah. like, very much cast the, like, typical, like, conspiracy theorist-looking mm -hmm. person here. Like, he's fat, and he has long hair, and that makes him, like, 
unlikable for some reason. Anyway, like he asks, like you said earlier, he asks for ID and Sam and Dean slam their ID at the window, door, whatever the fuck it is. And uh, Sam's ID says Han Solo. <laughs> fucking losers. They're making fun of this man for being a fucking, uh, I don't know. I don't know what are they making fun of this man for like he's like a nerd we like i guess but like yeah your id literally says han solo sam uh-huh so, uh, what's the worst crime <laughs> being a conspiracy theorist <laughs> or being a star wars fan <laughs> <laughs> yeah i i didn't read what dean said though uh i feel like i looked this up once it's it's um, in cursive, and as you know, Gen Zers do not know how to read cursive. <laughs> so, trivia uh, and references. Okay. Uh-huh. Oh, Dean's FBI ID name names him as either Jack Bauer from Twenty Four or Jack Ryan, who is a fictional character created by novelist Tom Clancy. None of these people I know. So, yeah, that's this exercise was it. futile. <laughs> Anyway, they go in and they they like talk this man up that like oh we want to hear your uh your side like even though we already heard it from the police etc etc. Anyway, as they come in, we start to see the room which is full of your typical like conspiracy theorist idea of like papers on the wall red lines passing through every single one of them type of scenario uh-huh and that's also supposed to cast him in a bad light but it looks the same as all of the like boards that like john and john Dean had and Sam yeah have had up. yeah anyway it's slowly revealed that like uh this ronald guy actually let in juan which is the guy who shot the place up i think is that what happened but anyway like uh he like let one in and then like a little bit later on he figured out that that's not one uh it's like someone wearing one's face and he says it's like a mandroid and uh yeah this guy is like really convinced and the thing that convinced him is that he has a copy of the tapes of like the security tapes and in one of the tapes it's seen that uh, the guy like the one the one who um entered the building has like laser eyes as he puts it so like just like the eyes that we saw on dean back in skin skin Skin. yeah (laughs) back in skin anyway this all happens and he's very excited when Sam stands up and says, Okay, I want you to listen very carefully because I'm about to tell you the God's honest truth about all of this. And Dean is like kind of like smiling. And then Sam goes, There is no such thing as as the mandroids there's nothing evil or inhumane going on out there just people nothing else you understand and like dean looks visibly uncomfortable Mm -hmm. he's like oh this is like kind of fucked up like we're just straight up lying to this guy and you know ronald ronald looks heartbroken he's like what about the laser eyes and sam's like it's just a camera flare and Ronald asks them to get the fuck out of his house and Sam was like one more thing and Then they cut to the motel room. Okay, let's talk about this scene. What an asshole (laughs) Yeah, he is an asshole You did skip over the fact that Ronald said like if the law won't hunt this thing down I'll do it myself though. Like that's the main thing that prompted Sam to lie to him However, I think a better way to do it would just be like we believe you but you like can't hunt this down yourself like we are stronger and we'll do it and we'll call you after we're done you know yeah like i think just being honest is like yeah because like what are they trying to do here 
Like, yeah. what, what they're trying to do is to make the guy not go out and do something stupid like shoot up a bank. That's what yes. they're trying to do. Yes. Uh, but, like, there is a more visible, there's a clear path between I tell the guy he's insane and then uh-huh. he, he yeah. shoots up a bank. There's, like, a clearer yeah. line through that versus I tell the guy the truth that he is actually correct aside from a few details and i tell him to give this to us and stay safe and he doesn't shoot up a bank like those Mm -hmm. are that that is a clear path and it's like it's just and also the way he is like he's just so like he did this and i was like oh i hate you i hate you you are a terrible person yeah, no, he, as Dean puts it later, is very good at being a fed. Yeah, unfortunate. Mm. Do you, I mean, okay, Supernatural never tries to connect episode to episode, but do you <laughs> yeah. think, well, because, like, last episode, Sam was, like, so dead set on saving people and keeping them out of dangerous situations. Mm-hmm. So, like, did he really think this was the best way to do it? I don't even remember all, what the I guess. last episode was. Play things, um, play right? things, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, he had the line specifically, like, even now everyone around me dies. Like, maybe he thinks that, like, by completely cutting off, like, any potential friendship with Ronald, he's keeping him safe by making him hate him. But also, he just seems like a fucking asshole. I do not think that's the intention at all. I don't think yeah. that crossed Ben Edlund's mind at I all while writing this scene. I don't think it crossed Ben Edlund's mind either. Yeah. So, he just doesn't uh, like Sam. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Sam and Dean are back to the motel room. And Dean's like telling Sam, like, you were kind of a dick back there. You, like, were so mean to him. And it's a little creepy how good of a fed you are. He says, like, we should have at least thrown him a bone because he did a really good job tracking down this thing. Uh, cause, you know, he guessed that this person, like, recharges underground. He guessed that they were, like, in the center of where these two locations were and might be hitting another bank, etc. So... Um, but Sam just, like, goes judgmentally mandroid. Ugh, come on, Sam. Yeah, Dean says that this guy isn't so different from you or me, and people think we're crazy. And Sam says he's not a hunter, he just stumbled onto this, and if he was to actually try to go after this thing, he would super much die, so we should keep him in the dark so he stays alive. Ugh, bad logic, my dude. So, yeah. They know that it's a shapeshifter. Dean comments that he hates the things because one turned into him and framed him for murder. Does a shapeshifter ever turn into Sam? No idea, I don't think so. I don't think so either, which isn't fair. Like, I think we should have that but may is it cause, is it because Jared Padalecki's a bad actor? <laughs> Honestly, I'll be honest. Okay, uh-huh. I think Jared Padalecki's all right at acting. Like yeah, uh, yeah. When he was Gadriel, I really liked that. It was mm. like incredibly believable for me. Yeah, the way he held himself was quite yeah. good. I could definitely see that as a different guy. That's true. Okay, so it's just at least he wasn't putting on like, like German Germanic <laughs> accent. <laughs> Don't Apocalypse World Cast is not a real guy to me. He literally shows up in one episode and has showed up in every single one of my nightmares. <laughs> so yeah, love that. Go Misha Collins. Oh God, what a man. Yeah, so Sam and Dean look at the sewer layout, and they see the one more bank that is accessible from that sewer, so that is where the shifter is gonna hit next. Okay, so Sam and Dean show up in 
in their little uniforms and they are in the bank and they're being shown around and they end up in this like um security footage room where they just sit down and watch security footage and like at some point like sam talks to the guard that uh guided them inside and Mm -hmm. uh the guard is like okie dokie and heads out and dean says i like the guy he says okie (laughs) dokie and then sam Sam says what if he's the shifter and dean like immediately straight face goes well then we follow him home and put the silver bullet through his chest bone and it's like (laughs) this is truly the supernatural experience yeah what a man yeah, I I think Dean would like me because I also do say okie dokie. That's like the, the, my entire um, input for this scene. <laughs> I also say okie dokie, Dean. Why don't you? Why don't you say you like me? So they they uh, sit down. They watch the screens, and at some point, Dean like zooms in on a woman's ass. Because, you know, he was like that. <laughs> yeah. I was watching this and I was like, oh, okay. Cool. Like, the thing yeah. with Supernatural is just like, how much shit are you willing to swallow, right? Mm. <laughs> like, That's what Dean much... says a lot every night when there's a woman in his room. Oh, no! <laughs> hey, lady. <laughs> So not to um, not to surprise you or anything, but how much shit are you willing to swallow? Yeah, exactly. Um, no, but like the thing is, like like you said, like supernatural, like because you can't watch supernatural and be like, um, oh no, this is misogynistic at every turn. Well, we do do that. But I like, do do that. I, I, I don't think that's like the ideal way to watch Supernatural for peak enjoyment, right? Mm. So like, I don't know. It's just this, uh, whatever. Who cares? This is not even his worst crime. So <laughs> what do you think is Dean's worst crime so far? I think it's still the one where he posts yeah. as a... Uh, 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 what's that? Like, uh, a reality, reality TV. TV show. Yeah, yeah. Recruiter. Recruitment, recruitment guy, yeah. Yeah, we did give him, like, what, 20? 10 points. 10, 10 yeah, points 10 for points. that. Yeah. Are you gonna yeah. give him a point for this one? Yeah, I'd like to. Okay. Alright. Dean, okay, How we much haven't is given now? Dean a point for a while. Wow. So... Record-breaking. Yeah, like, so, okay, this is only his eighth point of the season. Oh, he's falling behind. <laughs> yeah. You got a lot of catching up to do, D. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, uh, they, like, look around some more, and they see some guy turn around, and his eyes light up. So they got him. And then uh, as they look around the camera some more, Dean notices that the entrance is being locked up by none other than Ronald. And he's carrying a gun. He's carrying some stuff. And yeah, he like shoots up the ceiling and then goes like, this is not a robbery. Everyone stay on the floor. And yeah, we go to the yeah. marshal. What a guy! Right, so yeah. everyone's freaking out, obviously. And he's yelling, telling everyone to get on the floor, in the middle. Uh, Sam and Dean start heading towards him, and Dean says that he should do the talking, because Ronald does not like Sam. Um, For good yeah. reason. Mm-hmm. I mean, so, not to defend a guy who's shooting up a place, but <laughs> yeah. he does not like Sam for a good reason. Uh-huh. So, yeah, Ronald has chained up the only exit, so he's locked everyone in the bank, effectively. And 
17 come into his field of vision he freaks out a bit has them get down and he's asking them who they are and who they're working for and if they're working for the mandroid and sam says we're not working for the mandroid and he's like on his knees and his hands are out sort of fleetingly and he looks so biblical like thank you sam <laughs> i cannot uh, assign Sam biblical status this episode because he's annoying as fuck. Oh, yeah, no, I don't know. I just, I just like Sam in religious imagery, even if he's annoying in other contexts. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and Love to be a Catholic. Is... <laughs> <laughs> Ronald's like, shut up, I'm not talking to you, I don't like you. Um, which is also Ben Edlund talking to Sam this episode, I think. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, Ronald gets someone to check Sam and Dean for weapons. Uh, and Dean has a knife. Dean says about this, I'm not just gonna walk in here naked. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Dean. Yeah, so Dean starts trying to calm Ronald down. So, he's saying that he believes him, and that's why they're here, and he has Ronald come closer so he can talk to him. And he tells Ronald, like, it's the bank manager, we saw his eyes, and we have to find him before he changes into someone else. Uh, which I think he's also kind of being a dick here by not explaining fully here, right? Like, he's just, like, sort of setting Ronald loose on the shifter without giving him, like, the correct information. Yeah, like, this shifter is not gonna die with whatever bullets this guy's gun has, right? Yeah. Like, it's just not gonna happen. Like, you need a silver something to the heart. Yeah. So, Dean starts getting up and he says that Ron should take him with him as a hostage and they should go together to track down the bank manager. Um, and he says again, like, like, man, I believe you, you're not crazy. And Ron agrees, uh, but he decides that everyone else has to go in the vault. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Also, there are cops at outside. <laughs> yeah, at this point, like, the cops start arriving. Uh, yeah, so in the vault room, like, they, they all go in, except for Dean and Ronald. And Dean, like, locks up the door. And, like, you know, he's playing the, like, reluctant, reluctant, uh, sidekick or whatever. Mm -hmm. And, uh, like... <laughs> Oh, like yeah. there's a woman inside who's like, <gasps> fucking Sam up, and it's like the the situation is like he's like who is that guy? Like he is so brave, and it's like you are in a hostage situation. Yeah, you should be screaming, crying, and throwing up. Yeah, and it's like I don't know. It's just frustrating that this is how, like the two women that we see a lot of in this episode are portrayed. Yeah. Like, a woman who's really into Dean and, like, is flirting with him in the middle of a serious murder investigation. And also a woman who's literally in the middle of a hostage situation yep. going, oh my god, Dean is so handsome. I know. Oh god. Also, Do you think like, Ben Edlund has a crush on Dean? <laughs> what you know, is going on, Ben? You know, okay. Yeah, I can see it. I this is like it. triangulation of desire or whatever the fuck the Tumblrinas are talking about. Right, because I feel like if he was just being misogynistic, like, he'd like have like a woman for Dean and a woman for Sam, you know? Like, yeah, that's That true. would be his thing. Like, he's being misogynistic, and he, like, kind of wants to fuck Dean Winchester. Yeah. Uh, diagnosed, uh, Dean fucker 69. <laughs> yeah. This is so bad. Like, is this bad? What are we doing? I don't know. This is a real guy. 
sorry. I know, Ben, <laughs> if you're listening, if you're listening, we are sorry for calling you Dean Fucker 69. By we, I mean I. And uh, yeah, I, mean, we, I am sorry. <laughs> yeah, oh god. And also the way that I feel both of these women are like directed to like talk in a specific way too, right? Like, and it's, yeah, like... you know, the, the like vapid, like, not valley girl necessarily but you know like like a voice i think she has like a little southern twang mm. which yeah. i did like yeah i love yeah. a southern twang yeah I, <laughs> this is unrelated but like i was talking to a friend the other day it was a british and she like i i asked her like can you do a southern like a very like u.s accent and she mm-hmm. did it and she said like the the way that you do a southern accent is you pretend you're about to cry (laughs) cause like southern people like their voices shake and it's like they're crying so every single time I hear like a southern twanged accent Mm -hmm. I'm like this person is about to cry yeah I respect that yeah okay yeah because she's in a hostage situation yeah she's in a hostage situation yeah and honestly, I get it, really. Like, I too, if I was in a terrifying situation, I would sexualize the nearest man in order to feel better. <laughs> but I don't think that's what Ben Edlund's doing. Yeah. Like, we'll be, we'll, both of us will be sitting in a hostage situation and we're like, OMG, like, this random guy who's sitting beside us kind of looks like Sam Winchester. Like, he's got the hair. He's six foot seven, you know. Love that. And does his own laundry. Yeah. So, yeah, so they literally locked Sam up in a vault so he couldn't be part of the plot. And, you know, I really thought the shifter was going to be someone in the vault so, like, we would cut back to Sam and it'd be, like, a locked room murder mystery situation. Well, like, that's not it at all. They don't utilize the vault really at all as a setting. So, we have Ron and Dean looking around the bank manager's office, and Ron trips over a pile of clothes and shed off skin. So, yeah, this guy has changed out of the bank manager's form. Too bad. Yeah, and at this point, Dean finally clarifies that this isn't a mandroid, it's a shapeshifter. He says that shapeshifters are human more or less and that they have human drives. In this case, it's money. Which I think is like an interesting bit of shapeshifter lore, right? Yeah. Because yeah. like they're sort of saying here that they're just driven by one specific human instinct. Is that hmm. the implication? Because no, we don't see that with Mia. This... Yeah, no. I think what's being said here is, like, he has, like, human desires. Like, mm-hmm. he has, like, a human brain and logic, and he's not, like, just, you know, like, an animal that's, like, going after food. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I see yeah. that. I, th- I wonder I, I what think... this shapeshifter wanted to do with all of the money. Like, yeah, you know. like, were they planning a vacation? Like, yeah. did they just want to sit on it like a dragon? Love that. Love some <laughs> dragon lore in Supernatural. <laughs> which we do get. Oh my God. <laughs> but it's literally just some guy. Which, you know, it's Supernatural. I do think the, like, the fandom wiki picture for dragons in Supernatural is the funniest thing I've ever seen. Yeah. It's just the word dragons over a photo of a guy. Yeah, it's just some guy. Literally the most some guy to ever exist. And then the word (laughs) dragons underneath. Love that. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah, I, I think it's interesting that they're doubling down on the, like, it's human, right? Mm-hmm. And then, like, it's just, like, how do, like, are shapeshifters born from other shapeshifters? I think so, right? Like, Bobby John was born from oh, shapeshifter yeah. parents. 
No, yeah, you're right. Because, like, I was wondering, because they do the Lamarckian evolution <laughs> like, yeah. thing at, right, at skin. Right. Yeah, so, like, I, I think, I don't know. It's just, the, the lore is a bit fuzzy right now, I guess. Yeah. Uh, oh, they probably also, just change it up. Hmm? Is this the first time that they repeat, like, a monster? I mean, besides spirits? Yeah, yeah. No, I think they repeated vampires, right? Uh, yeah. okay, With Gordon. Yeah, 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 you're right. Dead Man's Blood and the Gordon app. Yeah. Yeah, so. but like, this is... Yeah, we don't usually get like a repeat, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, we don't usually get like, oh, we already did this before and this is what they were like before and that's what they're like now. I think yeah. the vampire one is interesting because like, it's like a new side of vampires, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And this one, like, we barely see the shifter, and, like, uh-huh. the shifter doesn't matter. Yeah. Well, it could literally be anything else. Yeah. It could. Um, so, Ronald's, like, pretty into Dean's explanation. Like, he's quite excited about the whole situation. He thinks that the shifter might kill someone and take their place, but Dean shoots his dreams that his theories are right down by saying that it doesn't really matter. And Dean finds a silver letter opener on the desk and explains to Ron that silver is the only thing that can hurt a shifter. And they start heading out, and Ron, like, looks like he follows Dean out and then he like looks back into the room and he grins and I was like oh is he the shifter but no yeah there's like a lot of moments in this episode where you go at like a person it's like ooh is this Mm -hmm. a shifter but like it never happens (laughs) it literally never happens I did think as soon as Sherry spoke to Sam the first time that she was the shifter because I was like there, there's no other reason that we would spend this much time on such a useless scene unless it was to, like, set up this character as, you know, the shifter later. But no, she wasn't even the shifter then. Boo. Yeah, I mean, it was a setup, but, like, it's a but different But not in the same setup. way, yeah. yeah. So her lines to Sam were still completely useless. Yeah. So, like, uh, we go to, like, a van that's, like, full of police officers, and they're talking, and they're, like, cut the power uh, to, like, lure the guys out. You know, usual police stuff. But, yeah. like, inside the bank, Ronald and Dean are, uh, like, just looking around still, and Ronald is still, like, very giddy, and Dean's like, oh. Why are you doing that? And he's like, no, I'm not nuts, you know? Uh, I am right, uh, except for the mandroid thing. And uh, he's like, he's just excited that he's not crazy. And then the power cuts off. And this complicates things because they can't look at the cameras to find the shifter now. Yeah, I... I was really surprised that at no point in the episode do they just decide to silver knife test everybody. Yeah. Like, because that's That's very much a standard in later Supernatural, at least. Yeah, that's true. Like, you just do a little prick of silver. Yeah. What will happen, even, if someone... Like, if someone is a shifter and then they get sliced a little bit with silver. I mean, if they go, ah! Like, I mean, that's just a normal reaction. <laughs> yeah, I feel like. Um, I don't know, maybe their skin starts, like, like peeling off in a slimy shifter way. Yeah, I mean, it, they'll be like, it's just an allergic reaction, bro. Don't even, don't even <laughs> yeah. consider it. Yeah, I don't actually know. Like, would it just straight up kill them? I feel like I read... A fic where, like, if a werewolf just gets a little bit silvered, then they just die. But that doesn't that is seem right. That is absolutely not true. That is not true at all. Yeah. Wow. I really don't know what the silver knife test is, but, I mean, apparently it works. Yeah, they do it so much, and they never find a shifter with it, so maybe it doesn't work? Who knows? 
yeah, who knows. It could have worked today, but they just didn't try. Yeah. Anyway, uh, they continue walking and, like, Dean is like, you really fucked up this one, Ronald. And, like, they hear a noise, etc, etc. And back in the vault, uh, the girl, Sherry, is still talking Sam up. And he, she's like, this is so wild to me. Because, like, yeah. Sam, like, Sam is right there. Yeah. <laughs> Sam is literally right there. And she's like, uh, Dean, like, your brother, has he always been that brave? Um... Like, uh, facing the guy, like, head on. He's a real hero. And it's like, I don't fucking know. There are, like, like every single extra in this room is attractive. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, like, I mean, uh, who, uh, whatever. Right, like, if you need to cope, there are options that are right here. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Anyway, uh, the door opens, Dean uh, comes in, and she's like, Oh, you came to save us! But Dean is like, No, 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 I just found more people. And he's holding a gun now. So, that's scary. And Sherry, like, looks him up, and it's like, Oh, why is he holding a gun? And this is the moment where you're like, Oh my god, is this the shifter? Mm. But it's not. Yeah. Uh, Dean calls up Sam to, like, talk to him. So they go out, and uh, Dean says that, like, oh, it's not the bank teller anymore. Like, it's shredded skin, and Sam's like, how the fuck are we going to do this? How the fuck are we going to go out? You're wanted by the police. We're not going to be able to get out of here. Anyway, like, Dean, uh, like, basically says, like, I'm going to look for the shifter. You stay with Ronald. And he says, like, help him manage the situation. And Sam, like, latches onto that and it's like, help him manage? What are you talking about? And uh, the whole time, like, Ronald is, like, at earshot. So uh-huh. he's hearing everything. And, uh, you know, Sam and Dean exchange about how this is, like, a terrible situation that they're in. And, like, the only option is the insane option. All that. And mm. so Dean leaves and Sam just goes, Hi, Ronald. Which is... I did scream out loud when that happened. Because I thought it was fucking hilarious. Yeah. Back in the vault, uh, the security guard that Dean has ushered in starts having a heart attack. Basically. And... Sam decides to like leave the door open to let in some fresh air, but no one's allowed to leave. Yeah. Yeah. Ugh, what a medic. Uh, and this is why he wasn't a free med, you know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and Sherry's confused about why he's helping Ron, but Sam says you wouldn't believe me if I told you. The phone starts ringing. And Ron picks up, and it's the cops asking what his demands are and why he's doing this. And Ron the whole time is like, huh, what do you mean? No, I'm not a bank robber. I'm kind of a crime fighter, I guess. And (laughs) Sam's telling him to just hang up. And the heart attack keeps happening. And Sam goes like great could be our guy could be a trick and someone just says you're just gonna let him die yeah. and so it's like uh no uh and he picks up the phone and basically asks the police to send in a paramedic but mm-hmm. like not to rescue anyone at this, this point in the episode, until Henriksen showed up, like, everything is a blur. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah, no, I was having a boring, boring time, and then, like, Henriksen showed up, and I, like, perked up a little. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, like, let's speed run through the rest of this episode. So, like, Dean is looking around, right? He finds that, uh, a guy from the vault is dead. 
So that guy is the guy who is trying to get the guard out. Yeah. Very convenient that the guard had a heart attack. Mm. Uh, anyway, like, they figure this out, and, like, Sam is like, oh, uh, man, I don't even know what the fuck happened to Sam. So, no, uh, the, like, uh, Sam and Dean figure out that that's the guy, so they, like, send the guard out. So Sam is, like, tasked to send the guard out, and then, like, Dean is tasked to talk to the guy, and the guy comes out, and he knocks Dean out, and then he runs through the bank, and uh, Ron runs after him, but Ron ends up standing in front of the light, i.e. the window, mm-hmm. so he gets shot. Yeah. R.I.P. Ron. Yeah. And it's this whole, like, slow-mo thing where everything yeah. is silent and Sam and shouting for... like, no! And then Ron like, gets shot Ron, and he get over. down! Like, he's shouting right? he's, he's shouting that. And it's like, this is the first time that slow motion has been used well in Supernatural. And it's for this fucking scene. Come on, guys. All right. Like, like it why? Was... <laughs> yeah, I don't know why Ron gets the special treatment. <laughs> Ron gets the good slow mo. Sam having his dead in the water moment. Fuck that. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But this rando guy who was mostly played for comic relief dying and then having no relevance to the plot afterwards gets like this entire moment dedicated to him. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they RP like Ron. They bother so much with um like bu- like RIPing this guy, right? Yeah. Like Dean has a moment where he's like, You did well, Ron. Like, sorry that you had to die. And it's like, oh my god. I don't yeah. know. Like well, after literally how callous they were about deaths in like Croatoan and then Yeah. I don't know, just so many other episodes. This is just so weird that Ronald gets to be commemorated so hard. Yeah. Remember that time that, like, Dean saw a dead woman in the house and went, ugh, and then just started picking things up and, like, holding her arm up. Yeah. Yeah. And then with Ron, it's like, I'm sorry, Ron. Like, you were my best friend, but I just (laughs) let you go. (laughs) Oh God! <laughs> By the way, I have that entire prayer memorized. Like of course <laughs> something you do. is deeply wrong. I have watched it so I didn't do it intentionally. Like it just happened. Mm-hmm. So yeah, Dean's getting the guard out so that he can get medical care. Um, and he's also being a hostage guy, and he lets him out, and one of the cops notices him and that he's taken over the situation. I just had a thought that Ron like Ron in this scene had more like um like they mourned her more than they mourned Cass in like (laughs) after Cass died (laughs) at (laughs) 15 They literally do (laughs) Oh my god (laughs) Literally, Ron dies. Um, sorry, man. Like you, you did well. And like mm-hmm. Cass dies, and they're like, "Let's eat pie, bro." <laughs> yeah. Um. So inside, Sam finds that the shifter has shed their skin again. Uh, apparently, this person can shift way faster than the St. Louis one, because they couldn't pay the the props and makeup team to do a whole sequence again, I guess. <laughs> and yeah. What do you even what, oh, and then the cops notice that the feds are here. And then who Henriksen steps in but Victor Henriksen. Hi. Hello. He literally is a cop. <laughs> <laughs> like <laughs> Yeah. But it's okay because he's hot. <laughs> I 
literally, literally that post that's like, I think if Jody met me, she'll be pulling for another kind of strap. Like literally, <laughs> that's what's happening. Yeah, so it's Henriksen, and uh, I mean, he is a cop, and we don't have to like him, but he is a very fun character, and he's hot. No, for real, yeah. Yeah, because, yeah, like, he shows up, and this cop is like, let me guess, like, you're in charge now, but you'd love my full cooperation, and Henriksen says, I don't give a rat's ass what you do, you can go get a donut and bang your wife for all I care. And that's just such a good establishing line. Like, it's just so the thing fun. Is, like, like, Henriksen and Dean would like each other, right? And mm-hmm. they do. And like, they eventually. Do. Yes. And I, After like, they know each reasonable. other biblically. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> After they know each other carnally, they like each other. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And, like, it's reasonable. Uh-huh. Which I think is something that I've said about another character before. If you're listening to this and you're like, you said it about this character, please message us because I've completely <laughs> forgotten. Yeah. But I think my main thought during this line was, like, like Supernatural tries to keep it really pg and Henriksen has done a really good job with the limits of what he has, you know? Yeah. Like, this yeah. sounds, like, just as bad as if there were, like, F-bombs in it. And what I really- yeah. I really want to hear what Henriksen would sound like if he was in succession. <laughs> like, yeah. he would be allowed to say so much and it would be so fun. I think if, if like, Henriksen was in succession, he would not say, you can bang your wife. He would say, you can fuck your mom or something. Like <laughs> yeah. That, you know? Uh-huh. And there'd probably be, like, more details and stuff, too. Yeah. That's yeah. true. So, yeah. He says that they need the SWAT team locked and loaded. And he says, this isn't a regular heist. You have no idea what you're dealing with. There's a monster in that bank. And uh, I think it's so mean to the first time Watchers of Supernatural live for them to think that, like, Henriksen is, like, a hunter and also in the FBI, because that is probably a cool character to the intended audience of Supernatural, but no, he just meant Dean. What? We're what? Oh, no, because, okay, no, sorry. He says there's a monster in that bank. And I feel like some people would think that he, like, actually knows about shapeshifters oh, and is a okay. hunter and an FBI guy at the same time, which is, like, kind of a cool character for, like, people who were watching Supernatural during season two's airing, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he does become that eventually. It's just that he dies. <laughs> sorry, <laughs> so, Henriksen. Yeah, sorry, Henriksen. When he dies, would... does he get as much fanfare as Ron? I have no idea. I hope so. I hope they 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 look at Henriksen and Dean. Just, I feel like every single person that dies like around Dean, he just goes like, "You're my best friend, but I just let you go." I think that's like just his default line, right? Yeah. So, in the vault room, Dean ushers in like Sherry and everyone else that he, he, that like got out right and at some point like sherry says like i thought you were one of the good guys and dean does the like whole i'm gonna humanize myself oh. what's your name and she's like i don't you don't care what my name is but he's like my name's dean <laughs> and uh she says like i'm sherry and then he like tries to reaffirm that like she's gonna be all right everything's gonna be all right Anyway, the phone rings, Dean picks up, and it's Henriksen. Yeah. And Dean was like, yeah, no, I'm not negotiating, so... And Henriksen says, good, me neither. It's my job to bring you in. A life's a bonus, but not necessary. And Dean's like, well, that's kind of harsh. And Henriksen goes, well, you're not the typical suspect are you dean and then it zooms in on dean's face and i was like who directed this episode (laughs) but alas it is phil segrisha so we have been spared he he hendrickson like does the whole deal where it's like get the fuck out of there bring sam with you 
and uh, Dean is quite surprised that like he knows about Sam and at some point he says like how do you know we're here and then Henriksen says go screw yourself that's how I know which I love yeah go Henriksen he's so yeah. fun he is a fun character yeah and he says that it's been his job to know about Dean so he knows about what happened in St. Louis he knows about what happened in um Baltimore and he knows about like the desecration of the graves and the theft and etc and he says I know about your dad and Dean defensively says you don't know crap about my dad and Hendrickson says like ex-marine racist kids on the road blah 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 real power military survivalist type I just can't get a handle on what type of wacko he was white supremacist so Jimmy true McVay. Tomato, tomato. So true. So true. <laughs> so true. Love that. Anyway, like, Dean is extra defensive now. He's like, my dad was a hero. My god. Like, I think, like, if you talk to anyone and they're, like, sitting there, like, my dad was a hero. Like, yeah. no matter who this person is or what their relationship with their dad is, you're like, well, calm down, buddy. <laughs> like, yeah. you know, like, I feel like if you have down, a good down, relationship buddy. with your dad, you say, like, my dad's a pretty cool guy. Like, you don't valorize your dad if you, yeah. like, if he treats you like an equal. Yeah, you say, like, my dad was a good dad or something. Like, yeah. my dad is a hero. That's, <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah. Uh, D- uh, Henriksen, like, hangs up on Dean. And yeah. Dean is in distress sorry dean mm. he just lost his best friend <laughs> literally at this point i think ron is his best friend like he has absolutely no one in his life and so losing a person he has talked to for like and had a bonding moment with for like 30 minutes is very significant yeah probably so uh and Henriksen says that the SWAT team is gonna come in in five minutes. And the cop says, like, they've let out a hostage and they haven't hurt anyone so far. And also, we're gonna risk the lives of all those people. And Henriksen just says, Dean's a greater risk to them than we are. Ugh. Well, at least you're still a fun guy, Henriksen, even if you're okay with... (laughs) So much civilian collateral. Sam is looking around for more shifter info. And he opens a closet. And Sherry falls out with her throat slit. And she's, like, not wearing anything except for, like, like this lacy, like... I don't even know what it is. Like, it kind of looks like a nightdress. And, I mean, honestly... I, okay, first, who wears this under their work clothes? Second, I guess yeah. this is better than the alternative, because if the shifter takes all of her clothes, then they probably had the chance to just have her fall out in a bra and panties, so at least they didn't do that. <laughs> yeah. But gee. <laughs> yeah. So, Dean comes back in, and Sam explains the sitch. And Dean says, like, hey, Sherry, we're gonna let you go. And she doesn't want to. And Dean insists threateningly. And then she goes out with them. And they, like, take her to the hallway where the other Sherry is. And she starts freaking out. Like, screaming, crying, throwing up, etc. And they think that she's acting. Um, but she just full-on faints. Yeah. Yeah. Good for her. And then they... So, like, Sam and Dean are quite confused. And Dean's about to just, like, stab unconscious Sherry. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> He just sits over her and goes, huh, and it's like, and then Sam's like, no, stop that. Like, yeah, what's the motive? So, right. Yeah. 
Uh, so Dane's like, okay, fine. And then he, like, goes over to the other body, and then it opens its eyes. And, uh, okay, that was kind of fun, actually. I did enjoy that. Yeah, so the shifter was just playing dead, and, yeah, they, like, try to strangle Dean, and, uh, Dean's fighting. Sherry wakes up and starts screaming and crying and throwing up again. <laughs> like, so true. Have you ever fainted? No. Well, oh, you... I was just wondering, like, how does she wake back up like uh, suddenly? Like, how does this work? Probably just the sounds Feel of the fight, right? Yeah, but when you're fan, it's like a different thing than just sleeping. Oh, I guess. But yeah. I'm sure there's still. But like, like smelling salts, for example, are used to get people to yeah. wake up from fainting. So I think any strong sensory input would still be. That's enough. true. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, and the SWAT team, oh, right, the shifter escapes, and the SWAT team shows up, Dean hides from them, uh, and they guide Sherry out when they find her, and then they see Sam and corner him. And, uh, Dean is walking around still looking for the shifter, and the shifter shows up, and they have, like, a little battle. Uh, they have a little fight and Dean eventually stabs her in the chest mm. uh, it, this is like not fun <laughs> I mean like yeah. it's not a good fight scene like when I was watching it I was like well this is kind of boring isn't it like they don't utilize this space they don't do yeah. anything fun it's just like a straight up like I hit you you hit me I corner you BAM yeah yeah also, the vibes are just really weird because of how underdressed she is and how he has her backed against a wall. And also, she dies, like, cupping his cheek, which is fucking what? weird. Like, she should be is strangling him. Yeah. Like, she has her, like, <laughs> hand on his cheek. Like, I don't even know how it got there. The vibes are just off. Ben Edlin needs to examine some things <laughs> I about think this himself. one is on Phil. This one is on Phil, yeah. Okay, Phil it's also like needs to examine case. some things, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. As uh, Dean is kneeling in front of her dead body, the cops show up. Well, kind of, right? Like, yeah. a, a guy shows up. And then Dean looks up and it's like, oh, he's dead. But he's not dead, as we learn later on, because... Do we even know how he gets out of the situation? Well, I'm assuming that, I think he just attacks like, the guy and takes his uniform, right? I think it's Sam. Like, Oh, I is it know. Sam? Oh, Sam already? Like, maybe it. Because, like, oh, Sam right, is Sam already in uniform. Okay, so, yeah. like That makes sense. Is Sam shows up, and it's like, uh... Anyway, like, Hendrickson and all the cops are like walking around and they're looking f they're like finding the bodies one by one mm -hmm. and like an officer comes up to Hendrickson and is like oh I don't think they're here anymore like we tore up the place and they're not here and uh Hendrickson is like no like look for them they're got they've got to be here and the officer is like I don't think that's necessary and Hendrickson says why not and they enter a room, like a little like janitor's closet, and they find two bodies that are um, rid of their clothes. Mm -hmm. And then we get okay, wait, the sorry. best music cue. Okay, go okay. On. Before we get into that very fun scene, I do have to say, like Henriksen must be having a day because he he already suspects that John Winchester is a white supremacist and then he walks in and the first dead body that he finds is a black man like sorry dude yeah yeah sorry Henriksen yeah, anyway like the best music cue in Supernatural begins and it's uh Renegade by the Sticks and if you're not familiar with this song like the intro of the song is very like vocals only 
and it's like a little bit of drums so yeah uh so like we get like these two guys walking right mm. and uh they're walking towards the impala and then the music keeps on playing they sit down the music keeps on playing and then the music pauses and then dean says we're so screwed and then like the drum start and it's like a whole thing i love this song so much so like uh i don't know like just hearing it in supernatural again is so much fun mm-hmm. and like the little ah the drink is out, and it's like hell yeah bro yeah yeah sorry that was just me being incredibly happy i was like i I watched this and i was like this is worth every single thing that happens in this episode like this episode is so boring and then harrison showed up and it's it's still like kind of boring and then we get this music cue and everything is all right (laughs) yeah it's fun they drive away and the episode ends yeah. Woo! Uh, they don't do music cues like this anymore in Supernatural, but anywhere I mean in future seasons. Yeah, I think the 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 last time we have like a music cue that's akin to this is Goodbye Stranger. The one that it's never too late to start all over again. What is it? How to see uh, Um, th- uh, the one before Tombstone. Oh, uh, Advanced Thanatology. Yeah, when Cat shows up and the song plays, and it's like, yeah, it's never too late to start all over again. And it's Cass, and he's there, and he's alive. Oh my god. Uh, yeah. Oh, I, I miss, miss him. Supernatural. I miss Cass. I miss Supernatural. It's weird to miss Supernatural when you're watching it. You know, mm-hmm. you're like you're watching it, and you're like, I miss this, and it's like it's literally right in front of you. Mm. But I do miss it. Yeah. Anyway, Crystal. Mm-hmm. What's up? What did you think about this episode? Uh, it was kind of boring. Like, they m- tried to make this, like, an interesting episode by making it very action-packed and sort of, like, going into the action movie genre and the way they shot it and set up the plot, but it was still boring. Yeah. Do you think it's boring because of the location? Yeah, I I think they didn't utilize the vault very well. No, because like Krobatoman was also set in one location and it was not boring. Mm. Well, also Sam and Dean don't really have any like character thesis moments. Yeah, in this oh episode. yeah, that's true. Like this is so devoid of like overall arching plot aside from the fact that Hendrickson shows up mm-hmm. yeah I think for me I have this same opinion like it's kind of boring like oh I was watching it I was like uh and then like I said Hendrickson shows up and it's like who oh. anyway yeah. yeah best line worst line oh I didn't even think about that I Are literally there don't think about good lines it. in this episode absolutely nothing you know I think what? I like yeah. I like Hendrickson calling John White supremacist like just for funsies, you know. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I think especially because in Haunted, like I don't know, Rail Tucker tries so hard to establish like someone being like a like an extreme hunter as a like a, a eugenics thing, but she pins this on Gordon. So like, I'm glad that like. As little as this is, John is getting a little bit of the heat for that as well. Yeah. Um, honestly, the only line I can think of that I enjoyed was, I like him, he says okie dokie. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, he says okie dokie. For me, my worst line probably is... Man, I would fucking know. Um... Can can we get can we give honorary line status to Dean, zooming in on that woman's ass? Yeah. Okay. When it's an honorary line. Yeah. Oh. Uh, okay. I'm gonna go with Sherry being like, "Who is that man? He is so brave." Oh my god, I forgot about that. You're right. Like the entire Sherry situation is like my god yeah and i get that they're trying to do the thing where like he trusts she trusts dean yeah 
Uh-huh. But I think you can do that without like yeah being like you can like it could be the entirely the same conversation with a different tone right mm-hmm. like if she was sitting there like he's so brave like i'm glad someone's out there like vouching for us yeah but like instead she's sitting there like he's so brave like i'm glad someone is out there looking out like you know yeah. it's the tone that really yeah. sets it yeah anyway i am db rating huh This one would be interesting, I feel like. I feel like people would be so hyped about the music cue that they just rate it high even if they were bored the rest yeah. of the time. Can I can I can I do mine first? Because yeah. you always go first. 8.4. Okay. I was gonna go higher, I think. I was probably gonna go 8.5. Alright. Holy shit! What? You wanna guess again? You wanna guess again? I mean, this doesn't count in our final um, okay, yeah. you know, guesses, but like, guess again. May- I'm gonna go higher? 8.7? Yeah. It's an 8.9. What the fuck, Eddie? I think people just really like the music. Like, I mean, honestly. It was a good I think, scene, I suppose. But... Like, I, the thing is, like, what we did was we watched the episode and then we discussed it, right? Mm-hmm. But I think if you just watch the episode and then you, like, hear the music cue, you're like, everything is retroactively better, <laughs> you know? <laughs> like, everything prior to the scene has become significantly better in my mind yeah. because of this final scene. So, mm. I, I get it. Yeah. <laughs> this one says so finally Sam is on the FBI database. Oh yeah, good for Sam. Yeah, he's not a little good boy anymore. Mm-hmm. Hey, they called Victor Henriksen nasty and arrogant. He's not nasty and But arrogant. He's a fun I little think... guy. I don't I don't know how you can look at Henriksen and be like he's Uh, I mean, are they saying this positively? Um, I mean, they say he's a good add to the show, but like, I mean, I feel, that's true. yeah. So, but like, I still feel like those aren't correct descriptors. He's just a fun yeah. little guy having a fun little time. Uh, this one, I must see of the season. Well, you must see all of them, but oh, never mind. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> Literally, it says, and I quote. A must see of the season. Happy face. Well, you must see all of them, but oh, never mind. <laughs> Thank. Oh, wait, okay. Someone just asked at the end if anyone knows the name of the song, and they put their entire email down for people to tell them if they know the name of the song. Should also, they email them from Babbot. <laughs> Um, their email is a U.S. Army military email, though. Oh, no. Yeah, have you heard that, like, Super Nintendo yeah. is apparently really famous with, like, the military? Yeah, it was, like, the most requested show for troops stationed in Afghanistan, which, like, makes perfect sense to me, but is, like, not, does not reflect well. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> yeah. Uh, yeah, someone said that Sam was too cruel to Ronald and that he was so different from the understanding cute Sammy we knew. So true. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think this that's it. Yeah. Do you have any more progressing insights on this episode? Mm, not really. Nothing. <laughs> Is the title a reference to anything? Because, like, they never say the word night shifter, and the fact that this is happening at night doesn't really matter. Wait, let's see. Night shifter. The night shifter. No, that's from 2018. All of this are, like, incredibly new. Hmm. I don't think it's a reference to anything. Okay. They just came up with a word. Cool. Uh, what's what's that one? That's like Nightcrawler, right? The Jake Gyllenhaal one. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, I think they re- they reference it later on with like uh, uh-huh. Metatron. He becomes a Nightcrawler. Oh, IMDb so. names the guard like his role. It's Stephen E. Miller as Okie Dokie Guard. <laughs> 
That is adorable. Yeah. That is so fucking adorable. Yeah. Anyway, uh, that's it for this episode of Bus Station Beauties. Next week, we will be discussing Season 2, Episode 13, Houses of the Holy. Oh yeah, baby. Leave us a rating or a review wherever you get your podcasts. Follow us on social media. We are on Twitter at twitter.com slash beautiespodcast and on Tumblr at bustyhnbeautiespod.tumblr.com. Our official tag is babpod, B-A-B-pod, and thank you to everyone who's donated to our Kofi at ko-fi.com slash bustyhnbeautiespod. You can email us any feedbacks, comments, or inquiries at bustationbeautyswad at gmail.com. See you guys next time! Bye! Bye.